a lot of the younger generation is going into the metaverse, into virtual reality. Well, what if deep fakes start happening there that you can't trust anything anymore? So, you know, a, a lot of what I worry about is the not necessarily what's here today. It's already worrisome, but what could come tomorrow? Welcome to Closer to Truth. We are pleased to partner with MindFest 2025, led by Professor Susan Schneider, on this year's theme of sentience, autonomy, and the future of human AI interaction. Closer to Truth is conducting a series of in-depth discussions with keynoters and participants. Today, I'm pleased to be speaking with Zoltan Istvan, transhumanist, futurist, entrepreneur, and political candidate. I really like his iconoclastic views, which, of course, doesn't mean that I agree with them. Great to meet, Zoltan. I'm looking forward to our conversations. Thank you so much for having me, Robert. Great. Well, let's begin with your talk here at uh, MindFest, which focuses on deep fakes, how deep fakes in AI and the Internet will soon impact our world. Now, we all recognize that deep fakes is a serious problem, but you go further and, and see deep fakes as really threatening to disrupt and perhaps even destroy society as we know it. Uh, why so? Well, I worry about mostly that we're on the cusp of having autonomous AIs that are kind of filtering around the web, doing their own things. And then all of a sudden, what if they're programmed to do deep fakes to each other, to us, all the time. And what if they proliferate? What if there's maybe millions of them, uh, even billions of them doing that? We could live in a world where virtually everything online is questionable to whether it's a deep fake. And if that happens, that presents a serious problem to the human race and especially to our communication with one another. You know, that's a, a, a unique perspective because we're normally talking about deep fakes, about political candidates or uh, um, use of, uh, of pornography with individuals and, and, and phony to embarrass them or blackmail them or who knows what. Uh, but your vision is a, is a more serious one because it recognizes that deep fakes is not just what, uh, what a human is doing with AI to create a deep fakes, but deep fakes themselves proliferating on an exponential basis. And since it's all digital, uh, it, 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 could, it could go out of control. Well, I, I, yes, there, there's also the existing deep fakes, which is happening right now, like in politics, you hear a president say something, but it's not actually him saying that or something of that. I mean, yes, that's obviously here in a danger and bothersome, but what I'm really worried about is the new era of deep fakes that's coming, something that's going to challenge uh, very much this communication that we have with one another. And really it's gonna undermine the way we look at media as well as social media. Already you can see with the American populace, there's been a huge downgrade in our belief and our trust in media. Yeah. And deep fakes is part of that. But if deep fakes becomes dramatically worse, it could be a, a far worse problem. And we could get to the point where we barely believe anything. And then of course, there's also the idea that a lot of, their, a lot of the younger generation is going into the metaverse, into virtual reality. Well, what if deep fakes start happening there that you can't trust anything anymore? So, you know, a, a lot of what I worry about is the, not necessarily what's here today. It's already worrisome, but what could come tomorrow? What would be examples of that that would significantly exceed what we're experiencing today? So in my speech, I had discussed this crazy idea that a friend had said, hey, could I just take a picture of your wife and see her undressed through an app? And I said, yes, you can already. And this is incredibly terrible because I don't want you to do that. And of course, he, my friend said, well, I'm never going to do that. But it brings up the possibility that other people could do that. And then other people could take a photo, for example, of my wife or even myself and make her or me do something out there in the world. And now you can have AI control that. And now it's maybe doing terrible things, illegal things. How do you protect your identity? How do you keep this from happening? No matter in the world of cancel culture that we already live in, which is kind of like shoot first and look who you ain't and you hit later, this becomes a real tragedy and something that we need to try to avoid. So that's kind of like a, a, what you might say is an anecdote to this deep fake technology that's already here, but really going to be coming here uh, and being discovered here in the next year or two and three. And a corollary to that is that when there are real uh, uh, 
things that are wrong that people won't believe that they're really wrong because they'll think everything is a deep fake. Well, this is exactly, you know, the boy who cried wolf. This is going to be the problem. You're going to say, oh, I saw that on the Internet. It wasn't real. And, but maybe it was real. Maybe it was a human being suffering or, or a, a society or a country suffering. And you didn't take it for real because you didn't think it was, uh, you know, the, the, the real deal. This presents a problem in how we react to things and how our morality even gets developed. If we can't respond to things that we believe in, we're going to be in a really changed world. And again, that's why I say this, this is potentially one of the most dangerous things happening in technology right now that nobody is addressing, certainly not the big social media companies. And um, we need to address it now before it gets out of control. A another anecdote is, you know, my mother is almost 80 years old. And she believes anything that she reads on the internet and anything that she sees, because we take for granted, most of us, when you see a video of something, that it's the real thing happening, sure. but not anymore today. And to convince people that it's not real is very difficult. We have a really deep civic responsibility to try to find a way to make sure the information we are getting is authentic and whether we trust it to be real or not. If it is real, sure, act on it. But if it's fake, then we have to revise our whole thinking towards it. But when you actually think about the mechanisms involved and the proliferation and potentially exponentially of, of, of digital um, expon exponential increases, um, it, would, it, would, it would seem like there's no antidote to this uh, poison. Well, Robert, I'm sorry to say you're 100% correct. And that is the fundamental problem um, I, I see right now with deep fakes, especially with autonomous AIs literally about to start happening on the Internet, is that we don't really have a solution for this. You know, in my talk, I spoke about maybe facial recognition. Maybe you can do income, some type of imprint technology on the images. But none of that can't be overcome, I think, by strong AI. So I think we're entering a world where the only thing that a human can really do is just take it upon themselves to really be discerning. And if you see something that's outrageous or you see something that you're not sure of, don't necessarily believe it. Discover more. There's usually good media sources that can tell you whether something is true or not. But we all have to learn to not trust anymore what's in front of our eyes. And unfortunately, that's a sad proposition moving forward. Yeah, and it's made worse by the political divide, certainly in in, in the U.S., where half the country roughly will dismiss certain media sources, and the other half the other. And so, what used to be the the adjudicating um, uh, uh, source of um, of, of uh, believable media is no longer the case because of political issues. Well, yeah, I mean, the political divide is really what makes the, the deep fake thing, I think, uh, kind of almost a horror story, because half the country won't believe it or will believe it just based on, you know, their political views. And we're so polarized these days that anything deep fake technology oriented is going to make us either say yes or no or whatever it is, instead of saying, wait a sec, let, let's try to understand what's happening here. Is this a real video? Is this a real image we're seeing? And unfortunately, um, there's no winning for any any team right now. Yeah, I, I mean, we we have to learn how to uh, uh, analyze our own psychology. I know for myself, as I've used um, ChatGPT or Gemini or or uh, Anthropics, uh, or Claude, uh, for information that I've used in certain ways. But then when I put it a question about myself and what I've done or my history. And I get something that's, you know, 70 percent correct. And then it says something completely wrong that I attended a certain university that I never visited in my life or I was the co-author of a book that I never did. And so it was as sophisticated as I think I am. That shocked me because I was believing everything else because I didn't have direct knowledge. But when I had direct knowledge, I saw how uh, how there was some really wrong things there. And so that, that's a trivial example because it's not sophisticated with images, but it, show, it, it, it deals with the human psychology of believing things when you read it in third parties, e e even though it, it, th there may be wrong things in it. And we have to learn, we have to discern, we have to learn how to be more discerning ourselves. Yeah, no doubt. And, and, you know, I have I have two young daughters, a 10 year old and a 14 year old. And I, I was advocating in their public school system to say, look, there should be classes or at least part classes 
on teaching about deep fake technology. You know, we get we have to get to students early to tell them you can't believe everything you see on YouTube. My kids are on YouTube a lot these days and on Twitter and things like that. And unfortunately, it's hard to keep them off. And I tell them again and again, you just can't know anymore. So if you're not sure, don't believe it. Double check it. Look for other sources and uh, and just you know, don't believe anything you see anymore. And, and this is, like I said, a sad state uh, uh, that we have come to where we used to be able to look at the major media and trust it. We used to be able to look at photos and say, that's the real thing. But, uh, you know, the, the wool has been pulled over our eyes and we're, we're kind of walking in the blind with a lot of this stuff. Yeah, and the wool is not going to be uh, taken off. It, 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 and we, we, we have to learn how to discern uh, differently. And uh, the the problem is not going to go away. You're not going to legislate it. It's impossible to do that. The the uh, transformation has to be in the training of individuals. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, no, the problem's not going away. I think society is going to have to come to a point when it accepts that it knows a lot less than it once did. And that when you're shown something new, your first, I hate to say this, but your first I instinct has to be of doubt. Is this a real image? Is this reality what I'm seeing? Or is this an AI bot that's created something? Or is this even something else from somebody else? Maybe not an AI, but just somebody creating a fake thing through their own kinds of uh, you know mechanism. I, I want to live in a society where I can trust my neighbor. But unfortunately, um, we've come to a point with at least with social media and the internet, where disbelief is probably a, a large priority moving forward. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Okay, ready for some questions with very short answers. Number one, can AI ever become conscious as we are conscious? Zero to 100, zero meaning impossible, 100 meaning it's coming for sure. 100 for sure, 110. <laughs> Two, is virtual immortality possible? Uploading our first person consciousness, not a digital clone, but actually you. Zero to 100. 95. Three, will AI generate some very unpleasant surprises for humanity? Zero to 100. 100. Uh, we're, we're in for a rough ride. Four, the ultimate human future is transhumanism. Humans melding with AI. Zero to 100. Probably 20. Uh, I, I think AI might leave us behind. Ah, so you've anticipated my fifth question. The ultimate future is non-human, all AI, no humans at all, zero to 100. 99. We might always leave some humans here, but mostly not. Many thanks, Zoltan. Viewers can watch more MindFest 2025 videos on the Culture to Truth website and YouTube channel. Also, over 1,500 videos and 100 TV episodes on all facets of consciousness, free will, personal identity, panpsychism, dualism, idealism, parapsychology, life after death, cosmic consciousness, but all infused with closer to truth's critical thinking. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us, and thanks for watching.